YouTube! What the Shogun crap is going on? So, as you see, this is a second episode of the Josai campaign, and it was pretty clear from the amount of likes and comments and excitement that was circulating on kind of the preview video that I'd given you that this, this was one that you all wanted to stay, and so it will stay. Um, I'm not as sure yet what comes next. I don't have an answer to that yet. Uh, I will be keeping an eye on the other three that I kind of gave you an idea for, and then just also reading through the feedback there because we don't necessarily have to go with one of those three, so I'm considering whether or not um, I change it based on what people are feeding back. Of course, we could just go with one of those three. Uh, online battles will continue regardless, so for those of you who are here for the online battles, don't worry. Not going away. I'm still going to be playing Attila online and all the other Total Wars for that matter. Um, so I'll be bringing you a variety of those. So, yep, won't change anything there. This is just more of a way for me to, to make sure there's... It seems like there's folks who really like single-player uh, videos, and there's some people who really like multiplayer videos, and there's some people who enjoy both, of course. Um, and so I'm just trying to make sure that for each of those categories, I'm trying to bring you all a nice variety. And I think there was way more variety in my multiplayer videos than there was in the campaign, and so that's part of what led me to this. Anyway, we were ready to take Shimosa uh, when we last left the campaign, so... So be a good chance for us to go ahead and do that. There's a few units. Uh, they got, I guess, a new daimyo automatically. Um, we could just auto-resolve this and should be fine. We'll lose a uh, spear levy. Not a big deal. So here's our options. Uh, looting actually hurts the honor of your daimyo, and uh, it's not good. Uh, we could also make them a vassal, but I'd prefer not to. Um, we're going to go ahead and occupy peacefully Shimosa. Um, and we've gotten the Shogun's authority here, which improves the spread of pro-Shogun and sentiment across all provinces uh, for 12 more turns, which is quite nice. Uh, we need to repair the buildings here. You can see our income has gone up uh, uh, moderately. I'm trying to remember how to repair the buildings here. Oh yeah, it's right here. A little different than, uh, than in Rome 2 or Attila. So we have an open construction site here, and let's just kind of think about this for a minute. So back here in Kasuza, um, we've got a traditional dojo, and I think that I would actually prefer to tear this down in, in favor of something else. Um, I'm actually going to go ahead and do that. And then uh, here we have the opportunity to uh, upgrade our farms, and then we could also build something here. So let's kind of think about this. A uh, cannon range, all this other stuff would be nice. Cadet school, we need a cadet school. Uh, cottage industry, obviously it boosts our industry. We could get Yari Ki and Yari Kachi. Matchlock Kachi here, which could all potentially be helpful as well. Police station, um, we can recruit a Shinsengumi there and it adds repression to the province. So that can potentially be nice uh, also. I think that um, we should go here. We can unlock Saber Cav and Line Infantry, which would be quite helpful. And then uh, we'll kind of just make our decision on what to build in this province. Uh, we could upgrade the harbor there as well. I think we'll be fine for now. Let's uh, go ahead and end the turn. Hopefully get a little bit of money back and kind of make a decision on where we need to go next while getting a few buildings built in this province. We now have access to the clay pits here. So you can always upgrade that here to get certain benefits. Um, so that, that it's, you know, potentially nice. Uh, here we got an iron ore mine, which could be very helpful to us going forward as well. So let's just kind of think about this, uh, what we want to do. We got this uh, shinobi, and it came from the traditional dojo. What could we build here? Let's just see. So cannon range should certainly be helpful. Uh, as soon as we open parrot guns, they are very helpful. Police station uh, could be nice as well, because uh, we need to recruit some, shin uh, some Shinsengumi, and it helps the repression of the province. Let's see. We can't open a training camp or a matchlock towers yet. Here's our iron ore mine, so it gives us extra iron ore to export, basically. 
can't quite think what I want to do here. And then we could get Geisha as well by building this in, and it adds provincial happiness. I might go ahead and focus this province a little more on, like, we'll be able to recruit Geisha, and then I might try and build a police station next so that we have stuff where I can crank out some agents, and then maybe this more forward-lying province here we can try and focus a little more on... Um, a little more on military means. Let's take a look at what we do know from a diplomacy standpoint. Uh, the leanings here, it shows here, so we got the the Mito here who are off to our, well, if you're assuming that the map is oriented the way it lies there, they're off to our north and east, but uh, I guess technically that would be to our north and east also. <laughs> Um, slightly, yeah, no matter which way you want to look at it. They are um, pro-emperor, as well as the saga. The saga, however, are way down here, so no worry. And then this other clan right next to the Mito. So we've got two clans near us that are unfriendly, and one is even hostile. Um, so that's probably where we need to focus our efforts next. So see, we're right here with the Mito. Um, right now we're at peace with them, but we need to make preparation to be at war with them, in, in my opinion. Uh, our armies will slowly be retraining, which is nice. We could even train more levy infantry at this point, but there's no need to. We need to save a little money and just be prepared to upgrade the buildings in our province. It's like the Edo are moving some troops for our land. And the Edo, of course, represent the uh, represent the Tokugawa shogunate. Clan management, clan development. So we have completed arms deals, which means that we can build a barracks and obtain sharpshooters and revolver cavalry, which will be very nice. Um, is there some of this that opens parrot guns? I don't think so. At this point, I want to focus my research on getting to this uh, foreign affairs because then we could build... I think we allied with the French, so we could build a French trading district, get Infanterie de Marine and uh, Leocion Ironclad. Uh, we can only recruit... or we can only research this at the moment because we haven't hit clan, uh, development level 2 for the clan. Um, and this modernization will hurt our public order to a certain extent. Um, the modernization, I guess, kind of goes against the traditions and, you know, it takes uh, some repression and other stuff to help balance that out. Uh, and, of course, you can add repression to the province, you can see here, um, by building these improved garrisons and then you can improve the city as well. But that just adds to modernization and increases your tax rate. We're going to need to save more money regardless. And we're going to need to conquer some more provinces, I think, to try and get this economy churning. We're also going to need some trade. Right now, there's not a lot of trade available to us, which is a big problem. What? Really? The Edo declared war on me. Why is the allegiance of the Edo imperial? They're the Tokugawa Shogunate. Now that is very odd. I've never seen this happen. Apparently the Edo changed... <laughs> changed their allegiance. Even though they are the Shogun, <laughs> they changed their allegiance to Imperial. This is going to get interesting right off the bat here, folks. <laughs> wow. Never seen this happen before. This is all new to me. All new. So, I've got my troops for training. Uh, we can certainly try and sabotage some of their guys, but I'd say that our best bet is to actually just uh, do a little recruitment here. Um, we could get Saber Cavalry, which is very expensive, uh, but I would rather just focus on... Let's see, so it's not a whole lot more expensive to have uh, Line Infantry over the Levy Infantry. Let's get a couple of Line Infantry. We can support this, and that'll make our army considerably stronger. And uh, the Edo, we just need to make them uh, make them regret having started a, a war with me here. So I'm going to bombard their stack here, cause a little bit of damage. I don't have a ton of ships, so it won't cause a whole lot of damage. And then we're going to try and sabotage this army 
Again, it'll cost us some money, but uh, our shinobi has leveled up as well. Did they take out the ninja actions, or is it still there on like the assassinate and stuff? Uh, the videos, I mean, sorry. So, plus one to subterfuge when assassinating. Chance of escape falling unsuccessful. We're going to go with the plus to assassination. And then let's hit the skill tree here. Establishing spy networks, sabotaging buildings, spy networks. So we got uh, plus subterfuge to assassinating there. Sabotaging armies, spying, scouting, scouting, spying. So it looks like this one's more focused on sabotaging and spying. This one may help us out more when it comes to assassinations, which can become handy. So I'll go ahead and throw it in there. Uh, we'll go ahead and end another turn. Oh, I need to upgrade my general too. I forget it doesn't warn me that units need to be upgraded here and it's very easy to forget, especially if you're me. There comes a pretty sizable stack from uh, from the Edo. They are uh, bringing the house, basically. I wonder what kind of troops they have. Levy infantry. Uh, Yarikachi is a unit to be respected. But uh, between my Yugi Katai, I've got two line infantry, but I'm still retraining some of my other units. And if we train much more, we're going to be hurt pretty bad. We can go ahead and start bombarding um, some of these armies here, like I said, and just trying to cause damage. I probably can't keep doing shinobi actions because it's going to... Let's upgrade upgrade my general here while I'm thinking of it. So let's check out the retainers. Jules Verns, 20,000 leagues under the sea. I like this. Plus two to crew morale and ships under this command. Plus one to the morale of the man's bodyguard. I guess that's what we're going to have to take because I don't know that the other is worth it. Defending enables night battles. That'd be cool. Stand and fight. Now that would be handy. Potentially. Replenishment rate is nice also. Well, that's pretty tempting actually. Plus 5% of the replenishment rate is very nice. This one enables night battles as well. So, still sphere, enemy morale. Hmm. Let's go ahead and go down this tree here. All right. Um, I'd kind of prefer to continue to defend my castle and let my troops retrain a little. I mean, the more men I have here, the better. I feel like I need to recruit at least one more unit of line infantry. This is going to stretch us pretty big. I'm going to go ahead and try and recruit too, though. I mean, it's going to stretch us badly, financially speaking. But we can always disband some units if we need to in a moment. We, we've got to we've got to defeat the Edo here, and if we make a quick push and capture Musashi, um, we'll be in pretty good shape. Looks like they're going to attack my port with their troops. This is something the AI do uh, does. Sometimes they'll just kind of walk past you and. Uh, go do some raids, which takes away a lot of your money, unfortunately. So Cedar, well, it didn't actually cost that much to repair. And I've still got a positive income, and I've got a pretty pretty sizable force here with four line infantry. Um, they're going to be pretty hard-pressed, because I can match them, and my guys are qualitatively better. Plus, I have the Yuga Katai, um, so I, I think the enemy is going to be hard-pressed to keep up here. Let's bombard these guys, but we didn't cause any damage. It's okay. Oh, I should have moved into range and then bombarded. I think they're still in range though that if I attack... Yeah, I'll still get naval bombardment uh, support. I think if we attack here though, those guys are going to fall back, which is good. Because uh, now the enemy forces will, won't receive any reinforcement and I can single out... Uh, this is actually the Daimyo. Uh, Matsui uh, Yusahide. So this is technically, this should be the Shogun, if I understand it right. I don't know if he is actually the Shogun, but he's the Daimyo of the uh, of the uh, Edo, which represents the Tokugawa Shogunate. So this is our chance to win a, a very important victory early on, and this is very odd. I've actually, I, I want to say I've seen this happen before. Um, something similar where uh, you don't expect... <laughs> You don't expect like the Edo obviously to change their allegiance because 
they they are the clan of the shogunates. <laughs> They're the Tokugawa, basically, and they switched over. I guess they had some feelings of... Um, they, they felt like they were betraying the, the history of the, of the nation or something. I don't know what the deal was, but... Very, very odd to see them switch to Imperial Allegiance all of a sudden. Let's wait for some non-foggy weather here. And get started. Alright. My Yuga Katai could be pretty deadly shooting down and out of this forest. The only cav unit the enemy had was their general. And my guys can fire whilst hidden uh, in the woods, so I am actually going to hide my Yuga Katai up here. And hopefully be able to get some flank shots with it, be my goal. I'll spread out my infantry into uh, thin lines and we'll try and lure the attention of the AI to this side of the battle so as to potentially give my Yugi Kitai an opportunity to make their presence known in a meaningful way. We're going to take them off fire build. Um, that way I can issue them orders where I feel like it's necessary. Has my uh, bodyguard modernized? No. Still a Hatamoto. So at a certain level, they'll modernize and, and carry pistols and stuff. It's pretty fun. Pretty nice. Let's move our levy over, and I'll put the, put the levies on the flanks. And then I'll let a matchlock Kachi uh, carry this flank over here as well. Maybe able to wrap up on an enemy. And we'll kind of just disperse our melee troops. Really, we just need to be able to get in the way of the enemy Yari Kachi and spear levies. And uh, we're going to have to be careful of our general. <laughs> you, you like to have their influence, but if they're right behind a line fight, they're going to get hit by a lot of stray bullets. Okay. Got my battle group ready here. Men are ready to attack, sir. Looks like the AI means to hill camp because I attacked them. This is pretty common for the AI to do. That is actually okay. Um, we can push up my Yugi Kitai and try and pick at them from their hill position. We'll expose the Yugi Kitai. I'm not worried about enemy retaliation. If their uh, Hatamoto charges me, I can shoot it to death before it gets to me. And none of their other units would be a particular threat with the Yugi Kitai in the woods. And technically, my Yukitai might have done well to be here, but we wouldn't want them to get overwhelmed by enemy troops. So what we'll do, uh, when the AI camps a hill, uh, there's some things that you can do to take advantage of their poor decision making. And basically, you can uh, try and lure them out uh, in a way that's very disadvantageous for them. So that will be our goal. And we will do so by trying to pick at a couple of units. My Yukitai probably won't be able to get line of sight uh, on this side of the hill, unfortunately. So it almost would have been helpful if they were over here. But this matchlock Kachi here, and let me give you a demonstration. So this levy infantry will outrange the matchlock Kachi, and I can move it into a flanking position. Put the matchlock Kachi here instead. And these guys will actually be in a position now where my Yukitai can fire on them with some impunity. Because they've come off onto the side of this hill where I'll be able to shoot up at them. They're going to do a little rearranging though here based on the fact that I'm kind of getting up all over their flanks. I'm going to regroup these guys here, ungroup those guys. Let's get group two. Kind of push up and give the enemy something to look at. Let's put these guys in loose formation as well. Because they'll be standing behind a line fight. And I, I'm thinking about putting our general over here, actually. And... I still want to get up on the flank of this uh, matchlock Kachi. And start shooting at it to try and lure the AI forward. We'll also use our Yugi Kitai to start shooting at this levy infantry. And that should force the enemy forward. You can see the AI will pull back and try and reform based on my movements on its flanks. And like I said, it's that that you can take advantage of eventually. 
So you keep pressure on its center because the AI will really want to face your main line it seems like most of the time and then you can keep pushing your flank moves and eventually you'll get position on them and you can start picking at them. Their pullback here though is actually a pretty smart move whether they intended it or not. I do have line of sight though if I want to fire from down here. I just need to get in range. So I'm going to leave my line infantry where it's at and we're going to try and lure um, enemy units forward. So we'll push up this levy infantry just a little. My Yukitai is almost in range. We have to be careful though, we don't want to accidentally stray into the arc of the uh, of the uh, enemy infantry here. Like I might be about to do, so... Yeah, so see, they're gonna actually try and come and face and shoot me. That's not what I want. So see how we're gonna pull them back a little here, and then I'll try and take a few shots. Yeah. So it's definitely kind of a game of cat and mouse, and it's not the most exciting thing. But it is necessary if you wish to do well. Okay, we've got the AI's attention over here. And I'm going to get shots in their matchlock Kachi, and then I'm going to fall back. And since we've got the AI's attention on this side, we'll go ahead and lure them in. And the matchlock Kachi here took some pretty heavy hits. So see, if the AI continues to follow me, they might waste a volley on my matchlock Kachi or stray into range of two units here. And this is how you can start to pick apart their uh, their hill camping, basically. So my own matchlock Kachi is uh, putting down some pretty serious fire here. And then, yeah, their unit here is going to stray within range of this unit. And then I can attack with this one, so we'll double team them. And then this matchlock Kachi is going to get absolutely destroyed by a levy infantry and another matchlock Kachi. So this is, this is definitely not going to be a good engagement for the AI. See, these guys have now pushed forward as well. And they're going to be taking fire now from two line units. So it's, it's this type of way that you can kind of start to gain an advantage over the AI. And we'll try and eat them alive uh, unit by unit here, basically. As soon as we route this matchlock Kachi, I'm going to push... In fact, I'm going to go ahead and push forward here. Uh, and push into the flank. The matchlock Kachi actually have pretty decent morale. And these guys are going to be getting some cover from the woods. That's why I'm going to try and get this matchlock Kachi up on their flank. And uh, open fire here. And that matchlock Kachi ought to be routing. Takes a couple more losses, I think. Actually, it's stabilized. I want to put some uh, fire on the flank of this uh, levy infantry as well. But as you can see, we're overwhelming the uh, enemy flank. We are taking some losses, but it's uh, it's manageable. Uh, we also have a naval bombardment that we need to use. So let's uh, target right up here in the middle of the uh, enemy formation. They'll move uh, whenever I put a bombardment in the middle. If they don't, they've got it coming. So yeah, this Levy Infantry is getting shredded, and this Matchlock Kachi, like I said, their, their morale is actually pretty good because they're a traditional unit, and the traditional units tend to uh, to have higher morale. So you can see them here fighting, uh, quite bravely actually, I might add. My Levy Infantry though now is lined up on their flank, and once reloaded, they're going to put the Coup de Gras here on these guys. So yeah, that's, that's it, and here comes the uh, Naval Bombardment. You can see men flying off the hillside. Got some nice... Oh, that hit was brutal right there in the center. We got some massive kills out of that naval bombardment. That was extremely worth it. Uh, the AI is going to now push me over here on this flank. So let's uh, put our matchlock Kachi here in the woods. Uh, get this other unit in the woods as well. And let's push, uh, push up and support. Uh, the AI is kind of engaging piecemeal here. Got to be careful of that unit that's on the hill. We might be able to get our general in behind. And let's get our uh, melee troops ready to participate here as well. Uh, we've got another minute and a half before we gain 
uncovered the hidden units. Yeah, before we gain another naval bombardment, let's actually go into fire at will here. Let's go ahead and move up. And we're gonna yeah, we're gonna move to a full out flanking here. Okay, we're now overwhelming this uh, levy infantry with fire from two line infantry and a Yukikitai. So they will collapse. And then we've got to be careful. There's a spear levy and a levy infantry up here. I would charge my general in, but we're going to, like I said, we're going to have to be cautious. What do we have approaching here? Got uh, some levy infantry moving down to engage us. My men. What are my men doing? Like reloading weird or something. There, they've opened fire. I guess they had like a, an odd line of sight. Let's uh, go ahead and start collapsing in on this flank here. Over here, we're putting a lot of fire into the enemy flank as well. And we can we can turn and put even more fire on their flank. Sorry, I'm not getting a ton of close-ups at the moment. I'm trying to control my units uh, as well as I can. It's important that we win this rather convincingly, preferably. We're going to need to push back the enemy forces with pretty heavy losses. Uh, we're getting charged by Yarikachi over here. This is very bad. So we need to kite the Yarikachi while firing with another unit. And it's going to be hard to kite a Yarikachi. <laughs> they are a very quick unit. Uh, we need to get the spear levy over here to support. Um, and then we got a spear levy charging in the center. We can take them with our own Yarikachi. Pull back here. And then... Like I said, we need to keep pulling away here. Just run. And we'll get our spear levy over here to uh, just get in the way of the Yarikachi while we continue to shoot it with other units. Yeah, my guys are going to rout there. That's that's okay. We caught the spear levy with our own Yarikachi. Let's focus our fire into these units here. Uh, we ran out of ammo with this unit, so let's actually pull, pull back. Uh, target the enemy general and then you can shoot these Yarikachi in the back so yeah the enemy general is about to get hit and that should take him out actually I'm not spread wide enough to get more shots uh, kill him kill him what do we got up here I love the infantry looks like uh, our melee engagement here is going well and then our shooting Engagement with these units is going okay. My Yarikachi is going to own these spear levy. Over here, that Yarikachi has destroyed my spear unit. Um, this unit's out of ammo, so pull away. The enemy general is about to die, though. Your victory is close, sir. And we're going to charge uphill. My Yarikachi. Okay. Let's actually pull them back. We don't want them getting shot. So we've, we've now routed all the enemy troops. Um, we have successfully beaten back the Edo here. So a decisive victory in our second episode here. Very important victory, actually. I had no idea, uh, nor would I have guessed that the Edo would have turned on us in, <laughs> in uh, the second episode. That is going to make this very interesting. because we're going to be able to attempt to take control of Musashi uh, very early on. Wow. So we killed a lot of enemies, uh, maintained most of our force here, though it will take some time to retrain. We kind of need to wipe out the rest of these Edo troops that are around. This will help gain experience for our commander as well. And then we can get back in here and garrison the city, which is otherwise going to be pretty unhappy without uh, without a garrison there. Um, so we'll need to take out the this Edo stack, and then we can try and push against Musashi relatively quick. So the Aizu wish for a trade agreement and a military alliance. I am very open to this right now. I need partners. And they are pro-shogunate as well. And apparently very friendly. So this this is very timely. Uh, the help of the Aizu here has given us a little more... Um, has given us a little more... Uh, income at a much needed time. The This is very typical of the AI, what they're doing there. They will... Um, 
just uh, just come past you with like a unit or two and start raiding all your buildings and it'll start costing you uh, income and it's extremely annoying and uh, sometimes it's okay I'm okay with it because it's kind of like a gorilla ish type strategy but the AI will do it in such a way that like I mean where, where did their troops even go here like I don't even know where they ended up so we'll have to keep an eye out for where they they turn up at uh, we're getting these units to replenish and they're actually replenishing rather quickly at this point which is nice it's probably because we got the cadet school uh, built or I don't know maybe it's something else there but so we're, we're gonna be replenishing uh, rather quickly here and then I think we need to go lay siege to um, to Edo um, so that we can get rid of the uh, the Edo before they are able to grow strong again we might be able to go start bombarding Musashi and it looks like Hitachi was taken by the Aizu so this is good. They've moved against some of the other local... There's... I don't know how those troops hid from my um, agent, but they did. This is going to be annoying. Um, I don't want to enlist another general right now. I don't have the money for it. This is so irritating. At least they're not causing much damage. It's relatively minor, actually. Um, so we'll just let these guys have their little fun here for the moment. Because I can't afford to make any more troops. We can actually start bombarding Musashi. I wish I could afford more ships right now too to make my naval bombardments more uh, effective, but they're quickly going to be retraining uh, this army over here. The AI is very quick uh, to start getting its troops back. Very quick. Let's sabotage this army. So we've managed to sabotage them and we escaped uh, undetected. Which is quite nice. And we'll we'll try and wear those guys down a little. Let's see, is my general nope, he has not ranked up again. Let's see, from a diplomacy standpoint, we're trading with the Aizu. We can trade with the the Mito. I don't know, they're Imperial though. Let's just ignore it for now. I'm not interested. If we can get a control of Musashi, that'd be nice. We'd get another province, which would give us a little more um, income, and then hopefully we can... Now, who is that that's approaching Sun Pu? What is their allegiance? Apparently, we do not know at this time. I'm going to go over here and do a little bit of exploring. I really don't want these people to lay siege uh, to Musashi without me getting there first, but they've got a whole bunch of Yarikachi. That's actually a somewhat dangerous army to me right now. I've got most of my troops retrained here. Uh, what kind of levy would they get out of Edo? So they're going to have some units, some garrison infantry and other stuff from the Citadel. They're quickly retraining their troops. This is pretty dangerous for me. We damaged the large town there though, so that'll be nice. And if we leave Shimosa, chances are that the public order will will turn ill. We might be able to move this general up to uh, hold it. I'm just worried that these guys are going to attempt to take Musashi. Um, and I would like to go ahead and take it, and it's possible they may even assist me. They are going to assist me. That's pretty funny. So if we continue the siege, and all the, these are all just levy junk infantry, so I kind of think we have Edo where we want it. They, they have a lot of levy infantry, but it is levy infantry. And I've got some actual line infantry. A little bit of melee and some matchlock kachi here. So And then I've also got the Yukitai. So I'm going to continue the siege and see if we can force uh, the hand of the Edo here and take take Musashi. We'll move this guy over to Shimosa. It's not quite enough to help, which is not good. Let's take a look here at the... Uh, if we exempt him from tax, we might go into the hole. No, we won't go into the hole. And uh, it'll help 
because we're still getting some of the pro emperor allegiance out of here and that's probably what's causing some of the uh, public disorder so uh, we don't have a whole lot of other choice but to stick to that for now now the Sun Poo, I do not know their allegiance are they attacking oh no there's just more armies coming down there interesting so another annoying enemy raid down here from this this uh, nuisance army that they can't really do anything to hurt me though they're just a couple of levy infantry and I'm not really concerned about them at the moment so we've damaged a bunch of the buildings here what is the uh, so it's summer are these other the other armies are still just kind of sitting around. I wonder if I attack if more of them will come to my the Odwara. Let's see what the diplomacy looks like if these guys showed out now. So these guys are pro-shogun and different. The Sun Pu are also pro-shogun and indifferent. We can't trade with either of them. And they would assist me if we got into a fight against the Edo here. Which could be potentially very helpful. I wonder if we... It's giving giving us the advantage at this point. So it looks like uh, the enemy has a bunch of melee troops, and I may kind of let them move forward and start to uh, take some damage from the uh, from the castle here. If we assault, we should be able to overwhelm uh, the enemy within. So let's go ahead and assault Edo. This is where I need to get some cannons. Uh, but I do have some naval support here, and I should be able to bombard enemy troops within the fortress. Which will be quite helpful. There is a lot of levy infantry, and they can cause some pretty good damage from the walls, but... I don't guess you really see me caring whether or not my... Whether or not my allies get shot to bits. Certainly never expected to be trying to capture... Musashi on this episode. <laughs> you take what fun as it comes, to be honest, and that's that's honestly one of the fun things about campaign. You just never know. Like that time that Garamantia made a client state of the West Romans. I mean, it, it's one of those things that will... you may never see it happen again, so you just take the fun while you can get it. I almost think that this uh, Yuga Katai... Yeah, I could actually start within firing range of the wall right here. And probably be outside of the range of any levy infantry. So our Yukatai can actually come in very handy here at whittling down levy infantry um, and making a way for my men to get into the walls. I think I'm going to want to come from a couple of different angles. Okay, you got all our guys here. I got some allies coming from over here. Uh, one of my allies may not have chosen to join me. I don't know. We'll see. Prepare to attack, sir. Okay, so it looks like the AI can't really see anything but my general at the moment. They'll probably move. They'll probably reallocate some troops to support as I start to show my hand over here. We'll try and stay outside of enemy range at this point. And let's see who's coming. Yep, both my allies are coming to my aid here. So they got their Yari key and other units here. We'll see what they're able to do. They're, they've got quite a few troops, so this will definitely help swing things uh, against the Edo, which is fine with me. The more other troops that we can kill outside of this uh, top tier of the fort, the better. If you're not familiar with Shogun 2, Troops fighting in the top tier up here will fight to the death, um, so it's best to not have to fight people to the death. There are some uh, levy infantry coming up here that we may be able to get shots on, because we're up on top of this hill with a nice line of sight down into the back of those levy infantry. But let's wait and see. So they're garrisoning the this second tier wall, and they're moving more troops down, so let's let's see where they're at. They've just now spotted my Yuga Katai. I 
wonder. It might be. I want to kind of get my Yarikachi up here to the top of this hill, along with my spear levy. I'm thinking about seeing if we can maybe get them to uh, to climb this wall here and get into the keep, potentially getting into combat with the levy garrison. We'll lose some men climbing the wall because obviously it's treacherous duty. But um, do I not have? Ah, uh, the very peak of that hill is blocking my shot, and if I get any closer, I'm worried I might actually come in range of the levy infantry. That's unfortunate. Let's ease forward and see if we can get shots without giving the levy infantry shots. I'm worried that we're going to come within range, though. Nope. So the levy infantry cannot return fire. We are just outside of their range, and I'm going to be able to shoot their men to death um, with relative impunity from out here. So let's watch my Yugi Kitai do some shooting. So they're going to use their long-range rifles. And we'll be getting nice kills here on the... Uh, on the levy infantry, and you kind of have to be patient this way when you have a unit like the Yugi Katai or sharpshooters, and take advantage of that extra range they can give you. See the uh, the levy infantry, what they're going to have to face. <laughs> oh man, I love it. I missed that. So yeah, the Yugi Katai are going to be putting some serious hurt on those levy infantry, and then meanwhile the AI doesn't have any defense on this side, and I my allies are slowly... Uh, moving their troops into position. These uh, these uh, Yari Kachi are going to be very nice. Whoops, going below the map there. Oh, someone else has some naval bombardment coming in. So someone has some ships in the vicinity. I have my own naval bombardment as well, and I'd like to uh, target the enemy general, but right now he's busy moving. So what I may do is just target these troops here. Um, I say that. This whole area in general right here. Let's kind of see where their troops stop moving here in a moment. Because I'm going to be able to waste these levy infantry... Or these uh, levy gar... Oh, this is a levy garrison infantry. Or, yeah, levy infantry. Oh, gosh, those guys are getting trashed. Yeah, so now my allies ought to be coming in view of the... Uh, of the Edo, and they have a few garrison troops over here, not many. I can't tell where the enemy general wants to stay. Uh, it'd be great if we could kill him, it'd cause a lot of problems. I'm gonna actually uh, bring my naval bombardment over this direction and see if we get lucky and kill the enemy general. These uh, levy garrison are wavering. Ammo-wise, we've still got over half our ammo with the Yu Katai, which is great. And we should be able to break through the defenses of the enemies here. Yeah, this levy garrison's now wavering. Here comes the naval bombardment. Let's see if we get a lucky hit. Not so far. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. Ooh, we did kill a pretty good portion of the Hatamoto right there, though. So, not crazy deadly, but we got something out of it. Okay, those levy have routed. We can now push our Yukatai up and uh, actually shoot this other unit of... We ought to be able to get a nice rear shot into those uh, garrisoned infantry there. Got 117 kills and have quite a bit of ammo left. Uh, roughly half of my ammo left. We should be able to shoot this levy garrison infantry in the back. We are. So yeah, I'm gonna just kind of take my time and, and try and pick away. Looks like the roof is saving this garrison infantry from some pain. I almost think that I may want to uh, let's let's actually save the ammo on my Yukatai because these guys are pretty precious, and I don't mean that in a golem type of way or Smeagol type of way. Let's move these guys up. So they're they're bringing some spear levy over here. I'm hoping my allies will put the pressure on soon, because right now most of the enemy troops are still on my side of the combat. And uh, even if we were to scale the wall, we'd have to fight down two levy infantry and a spear levy. So that would be a rough that would be a rough fight. I'm gonna move these garrison infantry up since I'm not as worried about wasting their ammo and see if we can get some shots. 
my men destroyed an enemy tower? I think an enemy naval bombardment destroyed the, the enemy tower. So yeah, my, uh, my line infantry is now going to get shots here. Let's watch them fire. That, that, uh, egg, egg, uh, duck egg blue here, color of my Josai troops. Very pretty. It is still kind of hard to get used to an Attila. In some way, I kind of like the more realistic color scheme, but, uh, I don't know. It's kind of hard to get used to. Like, you, you just, you get used to all that color in Total War, and it's kind of, uh, kind of takes you back whenever it's gone, and it's, you know, you know what I mean? I'm sure you all know what I mean. It's a little different. I know you can turn on the alliance coloring and it turns like one red and then one yellow, but I don't know, it's just kind of different. It's like the... You've gotten so used to each faction kind of having a color that uh, it kind of gets hard to ignore. So there are still a levy garrison infantry here. We might be able to flank them. We would come in range of that tower, though, that archery tower. We have another naval bombardment ready. Let's, uh... Let's place it roughly here and see if we can get lucky and hit this uh, levy garrison infantry that's up on the wall. We've caused some pretty dang substantial damage to these guys. Oh, dang. My guys came within range here. I don't know how long they've been getting fired at, but I got several of them killed, unfortunately. You know what we may want to do is go ahead and bring up our Yuga Katai and start shooting those guys who are on the second level of the garrison. So let's bring up the Yuga Katai, and we, we should be able to start killing a fair number of those. Okay, here comes my naval bombardment. Let's see if we get lucky and actually hit these guys on the wall. Yes! That's what I was looking for. We just wrecked that levy garrison infantry. Exactly what I wanted. So, my Yukatai. Let's just let them open fire and kill some more of these levy infantry. And like I said, we'll just kind of keep wearing the Edo out and get ready to uh, to take the Citadel. Their archery tower ought to be somewhat limited in what it can do here. I'm going to send my spear levy up first and see if we can get this tower captured. That would actually be pretty handy. So, I'm going to start doing some climbing here and I'm going to keep my, my Yarikachi at the ready. Yeah, we're, we should be kind of down and away from where that, that arrow tower can hit us at the moment. I have no more naval bombardments ready. And apparently I don't have a line of sight on anything over here. Let's pull back here and get our guys back up here on top of this hill again. So my spear levy, some of them will fall to their death while climbing. That's uh, and the higher the wall, the more men you're going to lose. So you can see some of my men falling to their doom here. A pretty fair number, actually. It's just one of those risks you got to take when, when sieging. If we can get up here and capture this tower, my Yuga Katai are now opening fire on this unit. They had the line of sight, and now they're opening fire on this unit on the wall. So I'm going to let them go ahead and get some kills. My Spear Levy is now actually in the process of capturing this archery tower. This will actually cause some damage to enemy units as well. And I, I lost a fair few men over here from climbing the wall. That does happen. An enemy tower is yours, okay, so the archery tower is now mine. Uh, let's take this spear um, spear levy and get into with that garrison infantry. And then let's uh, get this Yarikachi over here. How much ammo do we have with you, Kitai? We're about to cause this unit to rout as well, which would be quite nice. And we should be sitting just outside of range of these others. The uh, My allies are starting to storm the, the castle. This will force a move uh, from the enemy. Okay, my Yari Kachi, I'm going to start sending them climbing up. I'm thinking about getting my Matchlock Kachi up here as well. Your victory is close, sir. Yes, it is. My southern advisor, I appreciate you letting me know how close my victory is. Once again, let us prepare the sacred 11 herbs and spices um, and let the colonel begin to fry his chicken in celebration. So, let's see. <laughs> my, so my spear levy finished trashing these guys. That's great. We can actually capture this gatehouse and force the enemy to have to climb up. I think I'm going to do that. 
Um, I'm going to go ahead and climb up here with my matchlock Kachi, and let's go ahead and get some of our garrison infantry up here as well. Yeah, so if we capture this gatehouse, it's going to trap these uh, enemy troops down there. They'll have to climb up and potentially go into melee against my men, which they really don't want to do. And then uh, my allied forces are actually starting to storm the main keep, so I want to assist them if possible. That gatehouse is now in our control. Um, let's go over here and climb up. And my Yarikachi took about 10 losses. We'll go ahead and scale this next wall here uh, and try and get after that levy garrison. So yeah, all these all these enemy troops down here are gonna be in gonna be in trouble. This is not what they want to happen. Yeah, and I've got more garrison infantry coming up if we need it, but uh, my Yarikachi are about to be within the keep, and you can see my allies are, are have already pinned down a lot of the uh, have pinned down a lot of the enemy troops. I'm gonna get my uh, Yarikachi up there and try and capture the victory point. And like I said, now if enemy troops want to come back up to the keep, they're going to have to climb. And that will make them take losses and probably make it easier to pin them down, to be honest. Start getting my Yarikachi moving this way. Climb the walls! I'm going to use the rapid advance uh, so that my guys can move, move along more quickly. Climb! Okay. My Yarikachi coming around, and I'm going to get them into this capture point. There's some enemies over here as well, so let's keep an eye on them. I got more uh, allies coming up, though. Again, the, the AI, will, their troops will not rout while up here. They will fight to the death. So the Yarikachi being here is going to be appropriate. My guys are still coming around. A little bit of weird pathfinding stuff going on, probably. Yeah, the AI is going to get trapped out of its own um, victory point. So I am taking the victory point, and my allies are fighting through the uh, the enemy levy garrison. Let's watch that here. So we got Sun Poo troops here duking it out. Um, yeah, the Sun Poo are the ones that have the green green there. And I've got my I think I've got my spear levy coming around this way. I do. We'll throw them into uh, combat if I can find any enemies over here can't even find anything to click an attack order on. So, oh, it's because they... No? Yeah, my Yarikachi have control. And it looks like all the enemy troops here have been killed. The enemy troops over here are being finished off. There's just a few levy garrison infantry here. You can see them being stabbed to death on the end of a Yari. Man, is this a blood DLC or what? So awesome. Oh yeah! Get some decapitation going. So that will be a victory. So all the enemy troops have now routed. Oh man, that is beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. So a decisive victory. Um, I will now be in control of Musashi. Uh, this is going to be very nice for me um, to have taken. I can't remember if there's implications for taking Musashi. Kind of like there was for taking Kyoto in the Vanilla Shogun 2 campaign. Like you become the uh, um, uh, you become the emperor or the Shogun. I have no idea if that's the case. But we kept most of our troops intact. We've taken over another city. And we will peacefully occupy it. We could make the Edo our vassal, but we are not going to do that. I would like to take control of Edo. It's given us a decent boost to economy here, which is quite nice. Uh, we can repair the structures. They had a market here. Okay, so yes, uh, we are now in control of Musashi. So. Very nice, uh, very nice victory for us. Uh, our allies, uh, not official allies, but they came to our help. Shimoza, we will eventually kind of get under control. We need to get a Shinsengumi. So getting a hold of a police station would allow us to recruit a Shinsengumi, and they help um, kind of convert the, the uh, mindset of the populace to pro uh, Shogun it for us faster. So hope you all enjoyed this episode. It was a little longer, but I figured you all might like it, and we've made some very interesting progress. Like I said, I wouldn't have expected to um, be in control of Musashi. So the Edo are actually destroyed. I'll let you watch the little video thing here for the destroyed faction.
So I guess that's the end of the Tokugawa Shogunate. Uh, <laughs> and then we've captured uh, captured Musashi and encountered the Nagaoka. We might want to see if we can get an agreement with them before I forget. Can trade, and we can also trade with the Odwara and the Sunpu. Let's uh, enter negotiations and try to do so. This is a good day. A friendly visit. Truly All right, so we got some more trade. This is and then let's see if we can get trade going with the Odwara. Oh, these are pro Shogun clans here. Let us hope that today ends well. Now oh, come on! Please speak honestly, and I will give you. I won't good threaten attention. them. Uh, let's offer them a little small payment here. So we'll offer a small. No, oh, I said small payment. We'll offer them two hundred and see what they think. Okay, and then let's see if we can get trade with the Sun Poo as well. My friend, welcome. Come, speak. Ah, uh, that's okay. Perhaps if you listen to my offer. All right. So we've managed to get trade with our allies here. That's actually pushed our income way up. And as soon as we take the taxes uh, back on in Shimosa, we should have a little more. So definitely made some good progress here. Air of Carthage, signing off for now.